Hey guys, and welcome to Holloway Help, where I attempt to enlighten you as to the ways to solve physics problems. So I hope this helps you out. Good luck. Tonight's episode is this. All right, thanks for tuning in. Here is free body diagrams once again. So if you have a simple object on a fixed surface, first thing you want to ask yourself is what are the forces acting on it? Redraw your object, and the first force you're going to draw on it, remember only real forces go on a free body diagram. The first force we're going to put on typically is gravity, and so mg straight down. Mg is the same thing as the weight of the object. It's the same thing as the force due to gravity on the object. Those are all synonymous, but we want to use Mg because it makes your life easier for calculating later. After you draw Mg, try and look for what's touching the actual object. In this case, the ground is offering a support force. We have a special name for our support forces. We call that the normal force, F sub n. Look, is there anything else touching this box? We're neglecting air resistance, so nothing else is touching the box. Those are going to be our only two forces acting on it. Um, so that is a complete free body diagram. There's a second way of doing a free body diagram that's sometimes more useful, and so it's a body free diagram. So instead of having the body only, we have just a dot. And for this drawing, it would be the same mg down and fn up, only there's no body in there. Sometimes this is easier, so when you put your axes in, you can actually calculate your angles. For a simple problem like this, either one works fine. They're both acceptable. Now we come over here to a box and a ramp, which is a little bit more complicated. The trick to doing a body-free diagram when you have something that's not lined up with the normal x-y axis is to redraw it in the same orientation on your paper. So try and match up the same angle that's on the ramp, which I don't do very well. First thing you want to draw is mg straight down. There's our mg straight down. Now in this case, you can actually put in what it's equal to. So if we use g as 10, this is going to be 30 newtons. You don't have to label it like this, but sometimes it's easy to keep straight, things straight on your diagrams. Next thing, is it touching anything? Well, it's obviously touching the ramp. So we're going to put a normal force in the ramp. Remember, normal in normal force means perpendicular to the surface. It's perpendicular to the ramp, to the support surface. That's why we draw it that direction. So if I put a dotted line in here, like so, that represents the angle the ramp is at. And this line makes a right angle to that. So the normal force is at a right angle to the surface of the ramp. Next. Ask yourself, is there anything else touching it? I don't see anything else touching the block, so I'm done unless there's friction. The last thing we always look for is friction. Ask yourself if there's friction. Let's, to make this a little more complicated, assume there is friction. So we'll say the coefficient of friction here is 0.2. And that means there's going to be a frictional force on this. If it's starting from rest, the box would want to go down the ramp, and therefore friction is going to fight that and point up the ramp. So we're going to have a frictional force pointing up the ramp here, force of friction. This is all the vectors, so the vector diagram is complete. The free body diagram is complete here. The only thing you might want to do to help yourself for clarification is you might want to break the components, this vector, into its x and y components. Now, what we're assuming here is we're going to rotate our axes and call this line the x axis and fn along the y axis. This makes your life easier because there's less things to resolve in terms of vectors. I'm going to do a different color. Hopefully it shows up. So those become the vector components of my um, weight vector of mg. The angle here, 40, is the same angle there. If you look at the triangle, the ramp is hidden right there in the picture. And this is 40 degrees, which makes this angle 50 degrees. And since that makes a right angle, back up there is 40 degrees again. And that would complete our free body diagram and allow us to move into the next step, which is doing the sum of the forces in the x direction and the y direction. So once you get to this point, sum of the forces in the x equal ma sub x. That's what we call the interesting direction because it's probably going to move along the ramp this way. If that doesn't give you enough information, then you continue on and do sum of the forces in the y equal ma sub y. I hope that helped out. Check in again later for another 
fantastic episode of Planet Hollow.